Good. <coughs> I've been busy. Um, obviously, it's, it's been a lot going on. Um, players coming in, players going out. Um, pre season, typical pre season for every other manager club. Um, but it'll start to settle down over the next couple of weeks. Is that with Portugal as well? I mean, obviously, great to go over there with the facilities and things, but first uh, couple of weeks obviously just takes it more time off, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Listen, the Portugal trip was good, I think, just to integrate the players, um, the new players coming in um, with the existing players here. So it was a really good camp, uh, worked really well, worked hard. Definitely getting fitter every day. You can see the quality coming through. It's good to get a game under our belt against Tibbs. No ideal in terms of the numbers that we had. Um, players playing probably more minutes than they should have played, but I said they came through the game. So yeah, it was it was it was a good trip for us. Saying that as well, like the first couple of weeks in this place as well. You you obviously worked with some good facilities in your time. The next time we've settled in places like that. How does this uh, match up? Yeah, listen, it's a good facility inside. Um, there's obviously certain aspects here that we think we can improve um, with the pitches. Um, but we're getting there. Some good people here. They're, they're very understanding. They're, they're here to help us. Um, it's just finding your way about the place first. And then it's a great facility for the players to come to their work every morning. Uh, it's, a, it's a great setting. Um, but there's still things that we can do we think we can improve on. Um, but it's good here. You know, Durham's a lovely place. so. It's been good. It's been uh, the players have been working really hard, so I've been really pleased with that. Yeah, you say, Durham, are you looking to move into the area? I'm trying to. Eh? Um, um, I'm just been looking for an apartment, so um, it's taking a little bit longer than I, than I thought. It's very difficult to get somewhere to stay, but it's, it's a great place, Durham. Um, very vibrant, um, busy place. Um, so it's been good so far. As I said, the people that have made me feel so welcome. Um, but we know we've got a lot of hard work to do. How important do you think that is as a manager, sort of being in around the area, or is it something that you want your players to do, moving in the area, or are you happy with commuting and things like that? Listen, most of the players are sort of local anyway, so um, within half an hour. Um, so we've not got too many people that, that travel. All the new lads have, have, are, I think, within 30 minutes of here and 30 minutes of the ground. So, same with myself, I've sort of based myself between here and the ground every day. I think it's important to. To, to meet people at the, the football club, um, you know, don't keep yourself away from them. So I've been at the ground till, till late every single day because um, we know we've got a lot of work to do. Come on to the transfers and things shortly, but obviously pre-season you've been over to Portugal. You said with the club and things, successful trip. Really good. I think really good work that the players put in. Um, worked really hard um, throughout the week uh, with the game in between. I worked really hard in the game. Um, so, great trip for us, came back, they've worked really hard again, so we can see them getting better every day, much more sharper in their work. Seen a lot of quality over the last uh, 10 days or so. Is it a case of now you think the pre-season really gets underway now that you're back over here? Yeah, and then the we've got, you know, with the games coming up, I think that's where the players want to play, it's where I want to see them. Um, you know, we can work on a few things, we've already did that. I think with the games coming up over the next couple of weeks, it'll really set us up for the, the first game of the season. Obviously, we were meant to play St Mirren tonight, I think it was. That got postponed. What was the reason behind that? Listen, it was a game that we, we, we put in late. Um, we've had one or two injuries um, and we didn't want to risk um, any more people. Um, I think if you look at our schedule coming up, we've got a lot of games um, before that first game against Walsall. A lot of tough games, so we just felt with a couple of injuries we do have that we didn't want to risk any more people. And it goes in, start with a couple of non league teams, then. Builds up, goes to League One Championship. Is that important to mix it up a bit? Yeah, listen, I think you always do that. Obviously, we started with good opposition against Tibbs, uh, a couple of non league clubs, uh, Lincoln, Blackburn, Sunderland. Tough test for us, but the games that we'll, we'll have to work really hard on, the games that, that you should enjoy playing in. Um, assuming them three at home as well, you'll be hoping for a decent crowd coming in and watching them games as well? Yeah, hopefully. Um, I think. Um, I think in the off season, that you know the supporters, you know they just want to get back and watch their team again. They they wait all summer. Um, I think the Sunderland game is obviously the big one for us. Um, we should get a good turnout for that. Um, but it'll be nice being at home, being on our pitch. The pitch is looking lovely. Groundsman's doing a great job there. Um, did a lot of work over the summer on it. Um, so we'll be looking forward to the home games.
mentioned a couple of injuries there, a couple of knocks from last week. Things Tom Crawford was certainly one of them who came off. How's he doing? He's fine. Yeah. He actually trained the next day, <laughs> so it wasn't too bad. Um, it's a little knock in his hand. Um, we feared the worst at first, but you know it, it was positive news when he went to the hospital. Uh, Ewan Murray's picked up a, a slight hamstring. I don't think he's too far away. Steady. Um, he's picked up a little knock. Um, uh, Joe Gray picked up something, but he's back training. So yes, we've got a couple of knocks just now. So the squad's quite uh, light in numbers in terms of training, but they're training well and training hard. Max Carver was not involved in the squad over there. Was what was the reason behind that? He was ill. Yeah. So we didn't want, we didn't want to take somebody that, that wasn't well. Um, so he's back training now. Yeah, right on. Um, with Crawford, we just quickly going back to him. Got a little brief cameo up front. <laughs> Is that something? <laughs> there was nobody else. <laughs> um, we just felt we playing with a sort of false nine. We didn't have any strikers in the building, so we felt that we had to use somebody that that little uh, false position playing off the front, and then obviously it didn't last too long. And then shells went up there. It's something sometimes you have to do. Um, seen a lot of good teams doing that without playing with a, a recognised number nine. Um, obviously, what if number nine's in the building, they'll, they'll help us. And on that front, how are we looking at the transfers? Listen, we're, we're, we've made a lot of offers for, for about three or four players. Um, so we're quite hopeful by the end of the week we've got some more players in the building, some good players coming in at the top end of the pitch, uh, which is really important for us. But it takes time. Um, if you want to get good players in, it takes a little bit longer than what you think sometimes, especially at the stage of the season. A lot of clubs fighting over players. Um, a, lot of, a lot of clubs are, are, are short numbers just now. Um, and it's that season where players are just holding off. But we do think we we, we can get some more in by the end of the week. We're, we're really hopeful on that. Is that yeah, for the Billingham game? We would like to think so, yes. We would like to get you know the, the additions in by the end of the week. And I'm pretty hopeful we'll get them in if we... If we can all uh, work together and, and you know just push a little bit, and you know, and at the other end, it's just getting players to, to agree stuff, and you know, it's negotiations. That's how it happens. It doesn't take one day. It can take a couple of weeks at times. So, that's we're working really hard to, to bring them in. I'll throw a couple of names at you. Feel free. I know that you might not want to discuss them, but Ollie Shaw is a name that's been linked from Kilmarnock. Anything on him? I've never even heard that one. No. No. I know Ollie Shaw well, but. Is he the sort of player that you would be interested in if there was something available? I'm interested in strikers. I'm not interested in um, specific names, but I'm interested in bringing players at the top end of the pitch in because that's where we need to bring in. So it's really vital that we bring them in. Ollie Shaw is a Kilmarnock player, never been mentioned to me. It's not a name I've ever even thought about. It was Trilis over in Portugal. He just helped us. Yeah. It was a, it was through an agent that he just helped me for the, the few days we knew we were a little bit short in numbers, so there was nothing ever go, ever going to come of that. And one more. What was his name? Well, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, listen, we we, we just uh, Dominguez. We just it was just a player that came in and helped us. One player I want to talk about from last season. Um, I'm not sure whether you've been brought up speed with Brid Morris. There was a deal. Potentially in place, they're his loan deal into a two-year deal, as I understand it. Has any big talks been held about him? No, uh, but no. It was a sort of initial discussion. Um, I just wanted to get my my feet under the table, to be quite honest with you, and, and looking at what can improve and what players I can bring in. So, you know, we're, we're trying to bring some good players in the building. Um, we've, we've been speaking to a lot of players. So, um, as I said, over the next coming days and weeks. Uh, we'll have enough players in this squad to, to be ready for the, the game against Walsall, that's for sure. And we'll have a lot of quality coming into the, into the group. And that's the, the important thing, we can't just bring in players for the sake of it. Would he be the one that could be revisited? Or, or, you know? At this moment in time, um, it's, it's not something that's at the, the, the top of my list. I think um, I've got other other targets. Bryn was a player that was in the building before I came in, so I just said I've got to bring more type of player in who I want to bring in. One of the players came in last night with Brody. Tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, he's a young, 21-year-old, uh, uh, left back, left wing back. Um, had a great ground in at Celtic. Uh, he was there since he was a young, a young kid. Came across him over the last couple of years. Um, I like his potential. I think he's, he could be a real asset for us. He's only 21. Um, great speed. Um, 
typical full back up and down, but knows how to defend. And he'll offer good competition. I think that's the important thing this year that we've got to have people in every position. We've got to have two players in every position that we think can, you know, can compete. Um, it's, a, it's a long season, a lot of games. And you can't go through the season with the same players, that's, that's for sure, with the, the midweek games, Saturday games. I think Brody offers, offers that, you know, competition, but he's young, he's hungry, he wants to do well. Um, he's got a lot of quality about him. Um, went on to on loan to Airdrie last year. I was actually going to take him to Cove if I was still part of the. If I was still going to be there um, this season. He was one player that I would try and bring in loan from from Celtic at the time. Yeah, and you mentioned Celtic there. I think it was mentioned in the same last night. He's grounding there again. You'll be familiar with that. Important. Anyway. He's learned good habits, so uh, we know we're getting a young, hungry player that we think can improve the, the team and it'll help improve the group. The team so far with the business that you've done. Versatility is a bit of a key word. You've got players that will play in quite a few positions. Yeah. Is that something that you want to know? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think you'll need that throughout the season. Um, we, know we're, so we know the areas we're short in. Um, I think you have to be versatile now that, that players can fill in in a couple of positions. So I think that will help us throughout the season. So in the next couple of weeks, there's going to be a big push to get good players in the building. Could you understand a little bit of the I guess concern from fans last week when there was a few players going out the door, is that why the, the address was made over the weekend with the players going out? Not really, I just think um, we, we, listen, we understand fans that they want to see players coming in all the time. But it's, it's a football club, it's players come and go. I said in my statement that we want to keep players that are happy here. Some players, it was out of hands to, to, to keep. Um, some players want to have a new adventure. Some players wanted to go because they wanted to be near their family. Um, and I understand that. Um, and I can see where the fans are coming from, but I can assure them that there will be a lot of business happening here over the next week to ten days, two weeks, before the start of the season. So they should be excited. Um, and we want to bring a real bit of quality into the group. And I'm sure we'll do that over the, the coming weeks. We're working really hard. It's, we're non-stop, so it's not as if we're not doing anything about it. Would you expect any more outgoings on that, that end? Uh, not at this moment. I think um, our squad's not big enough, um, as everybody can see. But there'll be plenty of incomings, that's for sure. I don't want to say a concern, but like, it, it's very much a bit of a squad overhaul at the minute. Is there anything about with players going down, perhaps untried in the league, that you might be worried about? Or? That's like saying players coming for England untried in Scotland. Yeah. I know what I'm getting when I, when I see these lads, so... They're football players. Doesn't matter what league they're in. Um, they know how to play football. They know how to handle themselves. Um, so I've no issues with that. Um, people can say I was untried when I went to England. So I know what I'm doing. Uh, it's, the, it's the game I've always worked in. Um, people say I'm untried coming here as a manager, but I've got 400 games under my belt. So I've no concerns. These guys have played a lot of games. Um, they're football players. They know how to work. So no, no, no issues with that. Um, obviously, we've had to have a, a rebuilding job. I knew that when I came in. There was, it was going to be 10, 12 players at least that we had to turn around. You know, we inherited some situations where um, with the, the, the couple of players that have left, that's part and parcel of my job is to try and fix it. And that's what I'm trying to do just now. You mentioned that players coming out, out of your control, like contracts and things. Is that something that you're keen to make sure doesn't happen going forward? Like on your deals and things like that? Yeah, listen, we, we, I think what we said we try to build a team, but we try and build a culture and a club first. Um, so we have to look at our assets, bringing the, the younger players in. We think they'll, they'll be an asset to the football club in, in years to come. Um, so, you know, you want to try and always keep your best players, but it's difficult. It's not easy to keep your best players all the time. Um, they always see that, that they might get a bigger move, they might go for more money financially. I understand that. I've been in the game long enough. It's no, it's not the longest career, but we'll try and keep our best players in the building as long as we can. How do you balance that then? Because there's obviously a long-term ambition, but I guess short term. It's a bit of short term. It's in short term is to try and win games. So um, I have to get the squad ready for this season, and that's what we're trying to do. There is a big overhaul, but I've been, I've been used to doing it. Uh, we're in the Premier League with Dundee, I had to bring 15 new players in and we did okay that season, we finished in the, the top six. 
much the same situation here. Every season, I don't want this to be every season where we're bringing 10 and 12 players in. I want to try and, you know, bring three, four max in. So this season is hopefully a one-off for us that we're bringing the amount of numbers, but we have to. It's, it's, it's for everybody to see that we haven't been in, in big in numbers, the players that left last year and then players that have left over the, the last week or two. Um, but what we're trying to do is rectify we bringing a strong squad together. It's not just on the field as well, like some of the backroom staff. I know you both said at the initial press conference you were keen to bring a few more staff members in. Anything to bring up speed with that? Listen, we've just uh, obviously got my assistant man, bring Kyle in. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll look to maybe add one or two um, additions if we can um, over the, the, the coming weeks, if we can, but if I don't have to, then I, I won't do it. Um, it's just little small details, it's no extra coaches, so it's not anything to do with that. Um, but maybe just people just behind the scenes a little bit. Yes, I want to finish up really for me. Last night I think we got the news that the academy got up and running. How big, of part is, well, how big is that for the club, but then for you? Season and it's big for the club as to having a, a strong academy where you can bring your your homegrown players into the first team. It'll take time. You know, it's going to be a lot of hard work. Um, there's just been this group have just been put together. I had a, a chat with them yesterday about being a football player. What what, what does it take? How do you, how how can you get into my first team? You got to come and impress me. You got to work hard. You got to have the right attitude. Um, you got to live your life right. Um, so it'll take time, um, it'll not be an overnight success, we know that, um, but we'll slowly get there, small steps at a time, and hopefully over the years that we can we can see the benefit having that academy, and it gives all the younger kids a bit of hope, even throughout the area, I'm sure there's a lot of talented kids in the Hartlepool area that want to be football players, and it's just been given the opportunity. How often do you see yourself going and taking that in and seeing how they're getting on after this? Yeah, listen, um, as I said, I love football, so um, we'll always be around it. Um, the young kids are in this building, so she had a good uh, meeting with them yesterday to tell them what what to expect and the standards that they have to set. And then if I need some of them for to come across and train, they've got to be ready to train with me. Go on, appreciate your time. All right.